Everyone, how's it going? Uh, thought I'd get in on the ground floor on this one, making videos about cleaning records, huh? I think we didn't have enough of those, so I better better jump in on this uh, early while no one else has done it yet. Um, okay, so I thought I'd just uh, show you my process. Um, if you just want to see only the process, look for the timestamp. Let me give you a little blah, blah, blah first, and then I'll show you the process. But uh, here's the blah, blah, blah is just a little bit of how I arrived at this. Um, it comes from, so when I collected records uh, in my teens and 20s, I didn't do any cleaning at all, ever. Um, and, um, I mean, literally to the point that, like, I, not even dust, you know, like like the stylus would, would end up looking like a Q-tip after a while. You have to blow the, the accumulated lint off of it and whatnot. Um, and, uh, yeah, end of my 20s, sold my records, got out of it, and then the beginning of my 40s, uh, got back into records. Um, and um, didn't do any cleaning for a while except uh, wood glue. I got into wood glue as something that just seemed easy enough, but like the whole cleaning thing just seemed like a rabbit hole, potentially expensive. Just stayed away from it. Um, wood glue I was happy enough with for a while. I had some early successes with it. That gave me the impression that perhaps the technique was better than it actually was. Because over time, the hit to miss ratio, hit to miss ratio, wasn't really all that good with with wood glue. Despite a few dramatic early successes, when I really saved some records um, from being unplayable from uh, their, their surface noise. Um, and uh, if you if you you're sitting there at the keyboard with your tedious comment about wood glue all ready to go, more power to you, I suppose. But uh, but. Wood glue's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. If you want to do it, just give it a shot. Uh, use the right kind of glue. Use uh, Type Bond 2, and um, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't ruin records, in my experience, but it also just doesn't work that well. That's the deal. So, um, anyway, over time, the number of noisy records I had just started to accumulate, and I just got to the point where it's just like, I got to do something about this. Uh, you know, I got to save these records somehow. Um, and so I went down the rabbit hole of cleaning. Uh, first step I did was use that service perfect vinyl forever. Uh, I was disappointed because I had a non-nuanced understanding of, of cleaning and, and, and what's and the goals involved. What I now understand, I started to understand a little bit after using perfect vinyl forever and being unhappy with it is that there are two aspects of cleaning. Um, that we need to differentiate and they don't get that this doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion uh so what perfect final forever and other cleaning methods do well is uh, sort of lift the veil so to speak is what people talk about where uh, it just improves the sound of the encoded music in the grooves um so it did do that um what i was actually going for though was getting rid of noise a separate issue getting rid of noise and uh it didn't really help with that um, and so before understanding that more deeply, I made a video about it, talked about how I was disappointed. And as I understood this more, I came to see my video as being sort of unfair to Perfect Battle Forever, so I took it down. Um, so I did that. And then I moved on to, um, Vinyl Archivist Patrick method of, uh, three steps using different chemicals and using a vacuum to with each step chemicals brushes vacuum did that for a while thought that was better than wood glue um and now my dog's barking at the someone who has arrived so just a second okay where was i so patrick uh, vinyl archivist method uh did that thought it was better than wood glue um but i still had plenty of records that it, i just wasn't able to get clean is how i was thinking of it and maybe that's the time to introduce the idea that like what is causing surface noise is it dirt writ large, dirt in quotation marks, umbrella term, cover whatever is in there, we'll just call it dirt? Um, or is it that the record is damaged? And I've come to see that it's, it's I've come to think, I've come to conclude that it's more the latter. Um, that perhaps the vinyl is like breaking down in a microscopic fashion, kind of flaking off, dusting off. Uh, so, so you can't see, you know, you can look at it and like, oh, it looks clean, it looks fine. And then you drag a stylus through the groove and then um, you hear the surface noise. Perhaps that's what's going on. It's this damage that you can't see. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I decided to, go, to take one more step uh, down into the uh, cleaning rabbit hole, which is to buy an ultrasonic cleaner. 
so I bought the Kermis. And um, I, again, was not satisfied. It, it, I now in hindsight see that it does what it says. It, you know, it improves the sound of the record. It improves the sound of the encoded music in the grooves. But it wasn't doing anything more to get rid of noisy noise on noisy records. Not, not any better than this in any case. And furthermore, I found, found the cumulus to be very labor intensive. Um, so yeah, so after, and so then I sold it, uh, I sold it on eBay. Um, and, uh, so after all that, I came to conclude that, um, that some records you just can't save. And I didn't want to believe that for the longest time. Uh, and sometimes it's just, they're just noisy and there's nothing you can do about it. And my best guess about the reason for that is that they're just, they're damaged in a way that you can't see. Um, and furthermore, uh, uh, like, uh, interacting with different people about this, I came to learn that your playback equipment uh, is involved with this. I didn't know. I didn't really know about that. Uh, I've never had good equipment. I've, um, I've never had good gear. Uh, you know, all my, all my thoughts and, and money and all that stuff about, about sound quality have been about like just trying to get the best pressings I can. And that's of course important, but, um, but, uh, you know, and you know, great pressings sound great on my system. So I just felt like the system's good enough and it was for the most part. But what I now understand is that there are components that can help with noise. Uh, again, maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm the last person to know this, but in case you're someone who hadn't heard that before, let me tell you that, uh, you know, just having a better, better turntable with a better cartridge and with uh, a phono stage is, is phono stage a synonym for phono preamp or are they slightly different? I don't, I'm not positive. I think they're synonyms, but in any case, um, I got new stuff and that helps a lot. Like it doesn't mask it completely, but well, actually there are some records where it just, the noise disappears. Uh, more common is there's records where like the noise is just even more in the background and it's just that much easy to ignore. Um, so that's been really the, the most dramatic thing that I've been able to do to help with noise is, is to have better equipment, um, is to have a better system. So a combination of cleaning, because sometimes the... Sometimes the reason for your noise is dirt, all right? So you need to be able to clean, it seems to me. I'm glad I now know how to clean. Um, but uh, so a combination of cleaning to, to help with the times when the issue is dirt and then better playback equipment that mask the noise. And I don't remember what this stuff is off the top of my head. Hopefully I'll remember to put it in the description what I have. It's nothing that special, but it's helped a lot. Uh, you know, I definitely, I don't see myself ever going down the road of like, insanely expensive stuff, but it's more expensive than the stuff I previously had. Um, okay, so um, oh, why don't I put the timestamp right here then, and then we'll move forward with saying the method that I do, but hang on a second. All right, so here's my method. It's my variation on Patrick the Vinyl Archivist method, and, uh, and I'll just show you a few things about it that I think are worth paying attention to. What am I going to claim? Uh, I just got a copy of a German original of Persistence of Time um, to replace my the, that uh, Wax Cathedral MoFi mastered one. That's a two LP. This is a single LP um, direct metal master, um, and um, I'm I'm very happy with it. Very happy. I sold that other that, that other one sounds amazing, but guess what? So it's the original. Um, and uh, so yeah, let's do this. So, like I like I said earlier in the video, I'm no longer using the or did I say this? <clears throat> I'm no longer using the Liquinox, the, the detergent for the first step. I just skipped that first step now. This is a uh, but when you do use it, it's a one percent dilution. Uh, so you dilute it with uh, you know one parts to a hundred of uh, distilled water, um, and uh, you use a brush. You brush it in, and then you vacuum it off. Uh, I no longer do that because. Uh, I found that it just leaves bubbles behind, uh, like with every step. The, and my impression is you can't truly get it all off. And furthermore, I'm totally happy with how well I'm able to clean it without using it. So I've just stopped using it. And I go straight to the second step, which is uh, applying a, um, 
surfactant. Surfactant is to make water wetter. It makes it it it, uh, it breaks down the surface tension of water so it can get into even smaller crevices like grooves in a record. That's the theory in any case. So uh, I use Ilfatol. I also have Turgiclean. Mix those up. Uh, it's it says I think this is also a one percent, but whatever it says on here, you just dilute it with um, distilled water. So all I'm doing is a two-step process of just uh, one step with the uh, with the surfactant and then a second step with the uh, distilled water to rinse it. All right. All right. Party time. So uh, goat's hair brush. Um, as you can also use like a makeup brush, like you know for applying rouge or whatever. Uh, I used that for a while when I had the three-step process. I liked it because you can put it down like straight and, and it kind of like splays out and then you can you can hit the grooves in every direction. Um, but at, uh, I ultimately do like this one more though. So, but uh, I'm just saying something, something cheap like that works just fine. Uh, so we just load up the, the, the solution on the, the brush spin it a couple times to apply it, and then start brushing. So I like to start with the um, label straight up and down, and then once you get all the way around, you know you're done. Um, so, you know, with other systems, you've got a turntable that is just spinning the whole time underneath you, and I'm sure that's fine. I actually prefer this, though, because um, you can go nice and slow and just kind of have control over it the whole time, and you just do the whole, instead of doing it in many revolutions, you do it in one revolution. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll flip it around because the brush is longer than than half of the record. So I do the back and forth. I'll do one direction. I'll do the other direction. It's not, it's not clear to me what's the most important part of this process, but it's just easy enough to, to do every sort of style of brushing, so I do that. All right, uh, and, then, um, and then you vacuum that off, so I use the vinyl vac. Uh, let me just show you a couple things real quick about that, so this is how you keep the velvet lips clean like that. Uh, the main important thing to pay attention to is these these uh, these angles here. So so this angle here, this alignment, I guess, and then this rotational alignment, those two things. So if, if it's not sucking as well as you would like, um, pay attention to those angles and make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. And then I actually, I again just do this in one revolution very, very slowly. So when I first got this, my initial impulse was to just kind of like, you know, go quickly like that. And I find it just, it tends to spread the, spread the water quite a bit more that way. So I like to just do it nice and slow and you can observe your progress as you go around. Um, so I'll just do that for a couple of seconds so you can see how slow I do it and then I'll pause it so you don't have to listen to that. So here's a couple of seconds of that. <laughs> Okay, so I get that vacuumed off, and, and then for that first step, I don't worry that it's too perfect with the vacuuming, because um, uh, then, I mean, it's, it's, it's plenty good for sure, but if there's a little thing here or there that I missed, I don't worry about that so much because it's going to get vacuumed a second time. And so all that's left then is just uh, a rinse, and so I like to put the water directly, this is distilled water, put it directly on the record, and I use more than than Patrick the Vinyl Archivist uses. I think he just uh, squirts a brush a few times and then does it that way. I, I, it just seems to me you need more water. So that I started doing it this way and I'm happy with it. Uh, and then I've got a microfiber brush. This is the Sonic Broom from Audio-Technica. Um, this is a product I was never happy with. I, I got it as a gift once and it never really did much for the records, but I had it still laying around and so now I use it for this portion of it. And, um, you know, you're not putting any pressure in this at all. You're just stabilizing it with your hand. And um, sometimes I go, I usually start kind of fast and I realize actually it's probably better to go slow. So then I slow it down um, and um, I'll go the other way. Um, it, it tends to not want to spread all the way to this inner groove. So I kind of twist it and turn it to make it, to make that water go all the way to the inner grooves. I'm aware of the possibility that using too much water perhaps ruins any microfiber fiber action, that they get too waterlogged to help, you know. You, you, 
you just keep these things in mind and you, you, you do your best with it. I'm happy with how this goes. So that's that. And then uh, just another vacuuming. So I'll pause for that. So you don't have to hear it. Okay, I just vacuumed it off and that's it for one side. That's all there is to it. So, um, you know, brush it with the, uh, with the surfactant and then rinse. That's all there is to it. And then you flip it over and do the other side. So uh, I think what I'll do then is I will then just do the second side without yakking so you can just see how long it all takes and just see how it all goes. And uh, you'll, you'll hear the vacuum, which is unpleasant. Um, but whatever, at least you'll get a chance to see it if you want to. Uh, and if you don't want to, then I guess you're all done. Um, so um, thanks for watching and I'll go ahead and do this. surfactant and then vacuuming <laughs> making sure it spreads to all those inner grooves. I don't know why it doesn't want to otherwise. And vacuum that off. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. I'm not sure what that took, maybe three, four minutes. So something like six or eight minutes to clean an entire record. And um, uh, I'm very happy with this method in terms of like, you know, to the degree that, that uh, dirt causes noise, and it does sometimes, this is the way to deal with it. To the degree that something else that causes noise, doesn't matter what you use, uh, cleaning won't deal with it in my experience. Uh, and then what can help is better equipment, so shout out to people like uh, Rainbow Heart, just to say your display name, and Ben Rankins um, for uh, hipping me to that idea that better equipment makes for makes for less noise. Um, now I know, and so if you didn't know that, now you, you do too. Um, okay, so I, that's everything I can think to say. Thanks a lot. So long.